this is a huge surprise. I don't think anyone was expecting it. I think everyone was taking Theresa May at her word when she said there wouldn't be uh, a general election prior to uh, 2020. But for you, is, is it a good time for an election? Uh, we're really looking forward to it um, because when you look at what this government are doing, they're taking actions for which they've got no mandate. And one of the things we repeatedly say is that Theresa has no, May has no mandate for a lot of what she's doing. So a hard Brexit, crashing out of the single market, all of that, leaving the customs union. That was never, in fact, it said the reverse in the Tory manifesto of the 2015 election. Um, so I think it's really good that she's uh, going to go to the people and seek a mandate. And of course, we want to take the fight to the Tories because we disagree um, wholeheartedly with uh, their line of attack on so many issues. Because Labour were very quick this morning to come out and say, yep, we're for this, we're going to back this, which basically makes it a done deal, it's going to happen. So that might have surprised mm. some people about how quick the support was. Um, no, I don't think so. I think we're, we're very clear that we, uh, we want to, an opportunity to have a focus on our issues and our policies uh, and to take that argument and to challenge the Tories on what they're doing at the moment because the austerity agenda has got worse. People are going to be worse off. People are poorer uh, on the basis of, as I say, policies for which the government has no mandate whatsoever. Uh, and, and in particular, um, I think at a local level, we want to be talking about jobs for local people. Uh, we want to be talking about encouraging the new industries to Norwich, uh, we have tech industry in particular, which is going to be the future uh, of a, a, a big part of the future uh, of our city. We want to talk about public services and the funding for them, and also the shortage of doctors and nurses, and the appalling, the absolutely appalling um, uh, statistics we see from the National Health Service, uh, uh, including locally, where all those standards which were agreed under New Labour, which uh, which reduced waiting times and brought it by bringing in all that extra money and additional doctors and nurses, all being lost and being breached. You know, and these, these are political choices that the government is making that do not have to be made, and we offer an alternative. Because the polls at the moment haven't looked great for Labour. Jeremy Corbyn's approval ratings also haven't been stellar recently. Is it going to be nice to put all of that to one side and actually focus on policy and getting out to the public? I think it is about focusing on policy and, you know, We've had a lot of personality politics uh, of late, and that's not helpful because it obscures the real issues. And, you know, politics is quite fluid at the moment. We've had a lot of shocks around the world, not just at, the, at, at home recently. And I think it's really refreshing to be able, it will be refreshing to be able to concentrate on the policies and put those forward and show that we have a clear alternative to, uh, to, the, Tor to the Tories. And, you know, no, no polls up till now matter anymore. What matters now is that we're working towards the big poll uh, at the beginning of uh, June. Well, I think it's what 51 days, if my maths is correct. I ran out of fingers and toes, but I think it's 51 days. I haven't had time to do that yet. <laughs> I've been too busy today. But with, with such a short run time, d does that create a challenge for logistically getting out there and getting the message to people? Uh, it creates a huge challenge. And uh, part of what I've been doing today is working on that in terms of getting our campaign plan in place and getting our, our election uh, machinery into place. So, you know, lots of meetings now uh, to, 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 to put the infrastructure in place. I mean, we've done it many times, um, but uh, not normally at this short notice. Is, is there any risk for you with voter apathy? We've had a, a general election pretty recently. We've had the European mm. referendum this time, well, this time last year. We've got the local elections coming up very soon as well, which we're not touching on too much now. Mm. But there's been an awful lot of campaigning. There's been an awful lot of leaflets through doors. Mm. There's been an awful lot of door knocking. Is there any risk for you that there will be apathy? I think actually at the moment, I mean, following the um, referendum last year, I think a lot of people have been quite energised I and mean, a lot of people um, are, have very clear views on what the future of the country should be. Um, and if that's going to be what's discussed in this uh, general election, then I have a feeling that actually we'll see the reverse. I think we might actually see, I mean, not a massive turnout necessarily, but I don't think we're going to see uh, uh, people falling away and not, uh, 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 and not taking part. But you have uh, one Labour MP in all of Norfolk in, in, in Norwich South, but is, is, is it sort of a bit of a day for fighting talk and getting out there and saying, you know, we're up for this fight? We absolutely are up for this fight. Uh, Clive is a very popular uh, local MP. Um, he's also made his name in just two years. He's made his name uh, nationally. Um, and I have every confidence that we can run a successful campaign to see Clive re-elected.